Hey everyone, I'm Nico from Licks of the Beast, and in this video, we're gonna take an in depth look at the title track and opener from Iron Maiden's latest album, Senjutsu. For me, this song is one of the standout tracks from the new album. There's just something about the riff, the vibe, the chorus melody, which is so emotionally charged, and I suspect it also has something to do with my long standing obsession with traditional Japanese martial arts and culture. So as you can imagine, I was super pumped about the concept for this album. There is a whole lot going on in this song. The arrangement is a bit unusual, and there are a lot of parts in different sections, which means there's a lot to talk about, so let's get right into it. We start with a drum pattern that is clearly inspired by Japanese drumming, also known as taiko, which basically means drums in Japanese. Drums were used in war during Japan's feudal period, as a way to get the soldiers fired up for battle, to intimidate the enemy troops, and for other things like communicating orders in code. So if you've ever watched any Japanese period films or historical TV dramas, you probably know the kind of ominous imagery the sounds of these drums can conjure up. So I find this intro to be extremely powerful. Then comes the big open E volume swell which builds to the crashing E power chords over the continuum. All of this is setting the stage and the mood for something truly epic, and I cannot wait to see what they do with this live once the Senjutsu tour happens. Then, of course, we get this heavy, chugging riff, which is clearly an Adrian riff. <laughs> This riff is an E Phrygian, which is basically a minor scale with a flat second, which gives it a bit of an exotic Eastern vibe. The whole song is pretty much all in E Phrygian, actually, so it's going to have this sound consistently throughout the entire 8 plus minutes. There's also another guitar part, which is just playing the chords behind the chugging riff, and this adds a little bit of depth to the sound. A really cool thing about this riff is that it's in 6-8 time, and that's not super common in heavy metal. What this means is that there are six eighth notes per measure, and the way you count this if you're using a metronome is three eighth notes per beat. So one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Another Maiden song that uses six eight time is Blood Brothers from Brave New World. Bruce comes in with a verse melody that is quite rhythmic, and his vocals are doubled in a way that's a little unusual for Maiden. Normally, they harmonize in thirds within a given scale, so if the melody is in E natural minor, for example, they will have some notes like E and F sharp harmonize the minor third up, and others like C and D harmonize the major third up. What Bruce does here is he's harmonizing every note a major third up, which gives this a really distinct sound. So that F sharp and G sharp that he sings here are borrowed from the E major scale. So you'd think they'd clash with the riff and melody in E Phrygian, but it completely works. It also makes everything sound bigger and really raises the tension. And this is just one of the many things they do in this song that shows just how good they've become at arranging, especially with small details that make all the difference. The chorus has a long, drawn-out melody over the whole note chords. This is in sharp contrast with the more rhythmic melody of the verse, which is played over the 16th note chugging riff. It's very important for a song to be balanced, so when the verse has a very percussive melody, you want to avoid doing the same thing on the chorus if you want it to stand out. So you have one guitar part playing just the whole note chords. Another 
Another guitar is playing the vocal melody an octave up. This is actually a little reminiscent of Richie Sambora's intro lick to Bon Jovi's Bed of Roses, isn't it? And then you have a third guitar playing the vocal melody an octave down. This makes the chorus feel very full and very epic. The emphasis on the melody played by different instruments and different octaves is something you find more often in movie scores, which is probably why this part feels so cinematic. After that first chorus we go back to the verse and then we have Adrian and Dave taking back-to-back -back guitar solos. Adrian goes first with a key change to A Phrygian and the backing rhythm for his solo goes like this. He starts his solo with a cool slide guitar lick that is really simple, but it just fits so perfectly. It goes something like this. Dave's solo is played over the main riff, so we're back in E now. And he does a lick which kind of mirrors Adrian's slide lick. It goes something like this. I love when they do stuff like this because it really feels like the solos are meant to be part of the song instead of just a chance for the guitarist to take the spotlight. After Dave's solo, they go back to the chorus and then to something like the very beginning of the song with a low E chord ringing over a drum pattern as a transition to the first interlude. This part serves as a sort of breakdown to change up the feel and kind of spool up the song again before the next part. To me, this is like the part in the movie where the soldiers are preparing for the enemy attack, scrambling to gather weapons and to take their respective positions. The bass and guitars are all playing the same pattern. Again, like with the chorus, they're covering different octaves to make the sound broader. So you have the low octave. And the high octave. From there we go into the bridge, which depicts a siege in the most cinematic way possible. This is probably the part of the song that most obviously sounds like a movie scene. I mean, I could totally visualize the horrifying reality of a siege, complete with slow motion shots and all. Hats off to Steve and Adrian, and to the whole band really for this part, because it's seriously next level stuff. This section has two or three guitar parts to create this wall of sound. Now the first part just plays the chords to support the melody, and the sequence goes like this. that sequence twice except the second time instead of playing the second chord as a C we continue playing that G over B. On top of that is a melody that sounds like either one guitar playing a mix of single notes and octaves or maybe two guitars playing lines that are just slightly different. I wasn't able to catch it 100% but 
but I think it's more likely that it's one guitar playing something like this. And check out the intervals that Bruce is singing over those chords. So you have the 9th over the A chord, then you have the 6th over the C chord, and then you have the 9th again over the F. And that's really not typical for Iron Maiden. That's more like something maybe Sting might do. After that we have Yannick's solo over the main riff. The first lick he plays sounds like metal scraping on metal, like blades clashing or something. It's such an intense way to start a solo. But the lick that made my ears perk up from the first time I heard it was that last one with that heavy pinch harmonic that comes from out of nowhere. So cool. That takes us to the interlude again, only this time, instead of that breakdown figure, the melody is sung over the main riff. Now the reason they do this is because at this point in the song, to go back to a breakdown pattern would slow down the momentum and that would disrupt both the continuity and the flow. So this is yet another very clever bit of arranging here. Then we have the chorus one last time before the outro. <laughs> A bit like the intro, the rhythm of this part really sounds like it was influenced by Tycho drumming patterns. Now I noticed something really interesting when I panned it right and left, and that is that there are two distinct guitar parts. So the guitar on the right plays the riff like this. And the guitar on the left plays it like this. Did you catch that? On the tail end of the first part, one guitar lands on E, while the other lands on F, which is extremely dissonant and I don't know if it was intended or if perhaps it was just an oversight, but considering how many times they must have played that part together during writing, pre-production and recording, I think it has to have been intentional. But either way, the effect is really cool. Check it out. <laughs> And finally we have Adrian's outro licks, which add an additional element of tension to a part that is already quite intense. That cool effect that you're hearing is what's called a whammy bar flutter. So when you kind of smack the bar on a floating bridge like a Floyd Rolls double locking tremolo, it produces a cool flutter effect like this. The song ends with the ominous sounds of fire crackling, which lets us imagine the terrible aftermath of the siege and battle. 
This isn't like Wildest Dreams or The Wicker Man. This is a very dark, intense, and heavy start to an album which I'm loving more and more with every listen. And honestly, I think this is going to make for a killer opener on the eventual Senjutsu tour. So that's it for this video. I hope that you enjoyed this analysis and breakdown and that it maybe gave you just a little more insight into the song. Let me know your thoughts and questions in the comments section. Don't forget to leave a like and do consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you all so much for watching and stay tuned for more licks of the beast.